We flew halfway around the world to the country of Nepal in search of the notorious Yeti in the foothills near Mount Everest. In the early 1950s, multiple expeditions to find the Yeti were launched by Tom Slick and Peter Byrne. Their most significant discovery was at a monastery in the village of Pangboche. The Buddhists there have kept a suspected Yeti scalp in hand for hundreds of years. Off limits to most foreigners, they've agreed to let us see it. Well, we can tell it was a male because it's got barrel pattern baldness. <laughs> From those movies, documentaries in the 70s, I remember yeah. seeing these, both of these things. It kind of demystified the subject for people outside the country because then there was some physical evidence showing that they existed and that they were flesh and blood creatures. To see something that we've been seeing since we were children is in books and in movies is, is a powerful thing for us. In 2011, what was supposed to be the original finger was tested by the Royal College of Surgeons, and it came back as human. Do they believe that the Yeti is a real animal, flesh and blood? We have similar beliefs. When I asked the monk how he felt, he held to their beliefs that they believed this was from a Yeti. It seems there's always an answer, and yet they can't provide real evidence. It's so big. Yeah. How could that be human? And it's not even unanimous that that was human hand. There's other anthropologists that look at it and said, the phalanges of the three that were never touched much more resemble a gorilla where they're broad and flat than a human. When you look at how small the Nepalese people are, look how big that hand is. There's no question in my mind we're not looking at a human hand here. I mean, I put my hand up next to it, it's twice as big as my hand, and I'm twice as big as almost all the Nepalese people. It's from a Yeti, period. We would like to encounter a Yeti. Where should we look, and what should we do? Thank you very much. We sure appreciate it. Dani Vad. Let's hit the Arun Valley. The Lama told us to go to the Arun Valley, which is great because it's right over the next ridge. Since it's not too far from the Pangbolche Monastery, we're going to hike there with the help of Sherpas carrying our gear. Get their Sherpas on. We're gonna set up camp on the edge of the Arun Valley, and tonight, we're gonna do our first nighttime exploration to try to encounter a Yeti. All right, let's take a load off, make ourselves at home, and then in a few hours, we'll reconvene and go out for a night investigation. This is a great spot. Yeah. yeah. We're up at about 11,000 feet now. We are below tree line, but this is the optimal zone where the moisture comes in and the clouds just dump all of their rain and it creates these lush valleys where so much grows, all the sorts of things that could provide food for something like a Yeti. And it really tells you something, kind of a contrast with the popular term abominable snowman. They don't live in the snow. They live below it in these foggy, misty places like this. And just like with Bigfoots, Yetis are known to be nocturnal. So tonight, we'll do our first investigation down here, right around this valley. The, the belief that the Yeti, called the snowman, was living in the snows is quite wrong. Our belief was that they lived in the forests. The area is undisturbed and pretty much unexplored. This is our first night investigation in Nepal, and you know, it looks so similar to places we've been before, but it's not. We've never been out at night in any place like this, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect. All we can do is go in with the same bag of tricks we use in North America and hope that Yetis respond in the same way. According to the literature, yeah, they make some noise, but we know almost nothing about what they actually do. And at the same time, as far as we know, nobody's tried any of these techniques let alone at night. No, I think that, that's going to be obvious here, I think. All these Yetis will be virgins, period. Not for long, not with the bubs here. I want to be vocalizing a lot. All right, Renee, you want to team up first night in the Himalayas? Yeah, I like that. That plan, let's head that way. That's where I want to go. Matt, you and I. Absolutely, we'll go the other direction. We'll be in touch. All right. Stay on the radio. 
So we're gonna split off into two teams. Matt and I are gonna take one ridge, Renee and Bobo are gonna take the other. We're gonna see if the North American Bigfoot calls that we usually do will elicit a response from the Himalayan Yeti. We don't know, but it's definitely worth a try. Field opens up here. Oh, right there the it is, this is the spot. Bust out our first Himalayan calls from here. Matt and Clip are still on the move, probably all radio. Clip, you copy? We found a pretty good spot for doing calls, see where you guys are at. We're at a good spot to listen. All right, I'm gonna bust out my first North American Sasquatch call in the Himalayas. For one thing, we don't even know what a Yeti really sounds like. No one's ever actually recorded one before. We've heard people describe these Yeti calls, but it's just like Sasquatch calls. Unless you heard it yourself, it's almost impossible to imitate or properly describe. So we're gonna try our same North American techniques here, even though I don't think these things are the same as the Sasquatch. There he is. Uphill. Whoa. Oh, Bob's you okay? Yeah, I just didn't see that rock. All right. Himalayas one, Bobo zero. I don't hear anything, Bobs. I also want to look around on the ground to see what's moving through here. Yeah. Hey, Matt, Matt, come here. Look at this. What you got? Look at these. Those, those are deer prints. Where, 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 where? There and there, look how small they are. Those must be from the musk deer. Those tiny little guys? Yeah, little tiny deer. They call them musk deer. It's a different species. Well, they're tiny little guys. They're almost like fawns. Yeah, because if they were fawn baby deer, you'd see the big ones, too. Do you see any other big no. deer tricks? I want to see one of those. They look cute. A little miniature deer. Oh, he's a little deer. It's a cute boy. <laughs> Perfect snack for a Yeti. Oh, nice. Check this out, Bobs. Prayer wall. Beautiful. I was talking to some locals here, and they said that re they redid all these about 70 years ago. Oh, it's beautiful. Want me to read it for you? <laughs> yeah, you know Sanskrit? I'm brushing up a little bit. I don't know what the hell that says. That's awesome, though. Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. This might be a good luck spot to do some calls right here. Yeah, in front of the up there. Prayer wall. Matt. Yeah, what's up? We hiked up, we're at this really killer little landing spot in front of a prayer wall. It just seems like the perfect place to wing in a prayer, a squatch call for a Yeti response. I dig it, go for it. Okay, I'm gonna reply in about 20 seconds. We're all striking out. I think we should give Renee's howl a try. Is your voice ready? Yeah. Yep, all right, uh, 10 seconds. Yeah, let her rip. It had some echo to it. Did it? Yeah, it did. Hey, 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 some howled. You guys hear that howl? There it is again. Two. 